If you want to understand why your pond isn't clear, first you need to know what you're dealing with. Is it algae, too much organic material, or it might be too much other stuff floating around inside the pond. In this video, I want to cover each one and teach you how to fix them, or in some cases, if you even need to do anything. But if you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and my aim is to help people build and maintain their ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and visit my website, ozponds.com. So first let's talk about green water. A green pond almost always indicates that the filter is either undersized or you're overwhelming it. And when I say a green pond, I'm talking about if you scoop up the water, it's green. String algae is also green, but it's slimy and stringy, and usually the actual water is clear. And we'll discuss string algae in a bit. So green water is caused by tiny single-celled algae floating around inside the water. These algae are feeding on nutrients and sunlight. We only need to take out one to stop their growth. We can also kill it directly if we want, but we'll talk about that in a minute. If we have a good filter system in place, that can consume or process all the nutrients that the pond produces, and we starve the algae. This is why killing it, or even shading it, I don't think are the best options, because the green water is telling you the truth. There's an imbalance. And now the green water isn't harmful to the pond, it just looks awful. It's actually providing a ton of natural food to the pond. It's nature's way of taking that nutrient and recycling it into something useful. It provides food to tiny organisms like Daphnia and small fish. They in turn provide food for larger fish, and larger fish provide food for land-based animals. And that's how nature tries to remove the nutrient from the pond. It pushes it up the food chain. Now, of course, if you still have too much nutrient coming in, this problem will just get worse and worse until the pond ecosystem collapse. We see this in nature, clear streams or lakes with not a lot of vegetation and not many fish stay clear. If there's lots of runoff or nutrients entering it, it'll grow algae or lots of aquatic weeds and plants. This also leads to more and more fish as there's more food sources and more places to hide. This can bring in more predators like birds. They can add more nutrients that fuel more plant growth and more fish growth. Like in wetlands in nature, these are incredibly productive food bowls. But eventually the system gets too much growth, too much sediment, too much nutrient, and it becomes a bog and then a meadow, and it stops being an aquatic environment. But every now and then, the floods flush out the wetlands and send accumulated nutrients out to sea and allow the wetland to last for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Our ponds are little microcosms of the same process. Too much nutrient fuels too much growth and eventually we can overwhelm the system. If we're still throwing in lots of food and the fish keep breeding and the filters aren't being cleaned, like the flooded wetland, we can move through this process very fast. So I personally like to build my ponds in a way that allows these natural processes to do what they've always done. What I mean by that is I try not to feed the fish too much. I want a self-regulating population. If there's enough natural food, they can breed, and if there's not, they're gonna eat their own eggs and fry. It sounds harsh, but it's nature. I always size my filters according to the volume of water my pond's gonna hold and the types of animals I wanna keep. My favorite filter is a bog filter because I can utilize the same processes as the wetland in nature plants and bacteria processing lots of nutrients. I also design it so it's easy to flush, like the flood removing nutrients out to sea. But I send mine on to the gardens. Veggie gardens especially love the sediment rich water. I laid this system out in my pond formulas blueprint that's available on ozponds.com if you're interested. I like easy to maintain natural looking ponds. So when we have the green water, we might just have too many fish, or we might be overfeeding, we might have an undersized filter, we might just have a new pond and the bacteria, organisms and plants haven't had the chance to process the nutrients yet. We might also have nutrients entering the pond from garden beds or lawns that are fertilised nearby. We need to identify the source of the nutrients and then we can find the solutions. 
That means we might need to reduce the fish numbers, we might need to stop feeding, we might need to increase the filter size or make it more efficient. In a new pond, we might need patience. We might add more plants, bacteria products. Once I use flocculent to get the algae to clump together and sink to the bottom, and once it was there, it was cleaned up by either the fish, the bacteria, or the other organisms inside the water. We might also need to divert runoff away from the pond that's bringing nutrient in. If you're interested, I made a video showing how I added a bog filter to a small patio pond that was full of very green water. Within a month it was clear as the water from the tap, even though the pond is small and gets plenty of sun. But if all this sounds too hard, you can add a UV light. That will kill the algae as it passes through it. It works, but now you don't know if you have a nutrient problem unless you test the water with a test kit. I'm lazy, so I don't really test my ponds. For me, I let the state of the pond guide me and let me know what's going on. Now let's talk about brown water. Brown water is caused by organic material, most commonly plants and leaves, that are breaking down inside the pond. If you add wood elements like old stumps and branches, that could be the cause. Here in Australia, gum nuts are a common culprit. The name given to this brown water is tannins. It's the same as what makes black tea brown. The good news is this brown tea coloured water isn't a health problem for the fish or other pond inhabitants. In fact, where I live, the natural rivers and streams are all tea coloured as the catchment area is very heavily forested. Therefore, a lot of organic material makes its way into the water. The tannins can make the water a little more acidic. That means a lower pH than neutral 7. But this isn't an issue for a few reasons. Often the pond will have minerals that help buffer the water, most notably calcium and magnesium. If these aren't present, you can add them, and I recently made a video on that. But even if you don't add them and the water becomes acidic, it does a funny thing to the water chemistry where the ammonia is not so toxic to your fish and the different types of bacteria and archaea are able to do the heavy lifting. This is another reason why I like to work with what nature gives me. I don't like chasing certain numbers and parameters. If I'm dealing with low pH and lots of tannins, I'll use species of fish or animals that are tolerant of these conditions. If I have high pH, the same thing. But a lot of the time you'll find that the animals are more adaptable than people give them credit for, at least if the pond isn't overstocked. If the pond is overstocked and highly managed, then of course you need to monitor all your parameters. But like I said, I'm too lazy for that. I just want happy fish and a nice pond or stream to look at. A benefit of the tea stain water is that it's harder for light to penetrate and that can help prevent certain types of algae from growing. Tannins can bind with nutrients like iron and phosphorus, and that makes them unavailable for algae to use. Also, slightly acidic water can suppress the growth of certain types of harmful pathogens. So if you can live with it, it does have quite a number of benefits. But if you can't stand it, you can use activated carbon to trap it. Over time, the carbon becomes saturated and it can't trap any more tannins, and then it must be replaced. Water changes will also help by diluting the brown water with new clear water. Removing leaves and other organics will also help, but you'll need to continuously remove them before they start to decompose inside the pond. Another high-tech option is ozone. It'll oxidise the tiny particles, leaving the water crystal clear. However, it must be set up safely and properly. This method will also work on green water and even string algae. I've made a video on ozone, but I'm no expert. If that's something you're interested in, I'll let you do your own research. For me, like I said, it's perfectly safe for the inhabitants of the pond and it has various benefits, so I'm happy to live with it. So now let's move on to string algae. String algae comes in all sorts of types. Experts say algae is just nutrients and light, which is mostly true. But over the years, I've seen it grow in shady spots, even in ponds with great filtration. It's almost like it's pulling the nutrients straight out of the air. The thing is, string algae isn't one species. It's a whole bunch of different filamentous algae, all with slightly different habits. 
Some like full sun and heaps of nutrients. Others are happy to sit in low light with barely anything to feed on. Even in shaded ponds, there's always a bit of reflected light bouncing off the surface and rocks. Algae don't need much. They can photosynthesize as little as 1% of full sunlight. And some types have pigments that let them use different wavelengths, so they can still grow where pond plants wouldn't even bother trying. That's why sometimes you see it under a ledge or clinging to a dark rock that hardly gets any sun. It's not bright, but it's enough. When I say it feels like it's pulling nutrients from the air, what's probably happening is it's feeding on the micro layer that sits on every surface in a pond. Every rock, every plant stem has this thin biofilm made up of bacteria, fungi, tiny organisms, and they're constantly breaking down organic material and the algae just feed off that. So even if the water itself tests clean, that slimy layer can still be rich in nutrients. It's basically a little self-contained wetland on each rock and pebble. So in a way, I think that's why string algae can pop up even in clear ponds. Your filtration system might be perfect, but the pond surfaces are still doing their own recycling. And a thin coating of string algae is actually a good thing. It's part of the natural balance, feeding the micro life that supports the whole food chain. It only becomes a problem when it gets too thick, when it starts clogging intakes, smothering plants, or blocking the flow of water. So if you've got a bit growing on your rocks, don't panic. It's not a sign your pond's dirty. It's just doing what nature does best, cleaning up the last little bit of nutrients that slips through the cracks. In my experience, string algae tends to come and go with the seasons. It's worse when the weather's all over the place, spring and autumn especially. One day it's warm, the next it's cold, and those little swings in temperature and sunlight seem to kick it into gear. This time of year is also when the plants are changing. In spring they're only just getting going, and in autumn they're starting to die back. So they're not taking up nutrients like they do through the main growing season, and that leaves more for the algae. And then I get some people message me saying their worst algae is in the middle of summer when the water's hot, and others say it's in winter. It just shows how diverse and opportunistic these species are. They've been around longer than pretty much anything else on Earth, so they're very good at adapting. Over the years I've tried plenty of fixes, and the quickest and most satisfying is just manual removal. Grab it and pull it out. And that also removes the nutrients that it used to grow. Treatments like hydrogen peroxide or sodium percarbonate work fast too. These are oxidizers like the ozone I mentioned earlier, but not so high tech. They kill it back and you feel like you've won, but you know deep down the nutrients are still there. Maybe now the bacteria can catch up and finish the job. So bacteria treatments can help in that way. They compete with the algae and they clean up the organics. Cleaning filters and getting rid of that muck that builds up is also going to take away that food source. I've even tried things like promoting diatomes. That's a different kind of algae that's not so unsightly, but it uses the same nutrients. I've also messed around with phosphate binders, pH buffers, zeolite, and even copper-based algicides. The funny thing is, when I get frustrated and I throw a few of these ideas at it, then one day it's just gone, and I'm never completely sure what actually worked. I even did a little jar test recently. Seven jars got treatments, and one was a control. And the algae disappeared in all of the jars over time. And that's why I always say string algae keeps me guessing. But one thing I've noticed every time is that it's an excellent natural filter. Ponds or bog filters full of string algae always have crystal clear water. It traps fine sediments, so when you pull it out, you're also pulling out that trapped waste. And I think maybe that's the best approach. You just need to keep an eye on it, remove it when it builds up, and with it, you're removing the nutrients and the silt. And always remember, heavy algae growth usually means there's plenty of other food in the pond so it's a good time to stop feeding the fish. Let them and the other critters living in the pond help clean things up. Now let's talk about cloudy or muddy water. 
Cloudy water, in my experience, is almost always clay particles floating around. I've heard people say it can sometimes be bacterial blooms or tiny bits of organic material, and that can happen, but it's usually short-lived. I've never actually seen that in any of my ponds, so for me it's always been the clay. The problem with the clay is that these particles are so fine and have charged ions that stop them from clumping together. So they just hang there in suspension, they don't sink and they don't get trapped in the filter, and the water just stays milky. When I build a new pond, this is a really common problem. I use rock and pebble on the base, and because I'm lazy, I don't rinse it first. When I fire the pond up for the first time, the water looks like straight mud. What I do is add a flocculant, and that settles everything out. It's not ideal because all of those nutrients still end up in the system, and I usually get a fair bit of algae for a while after that. But as the plants start growing and the filter matures, it sorts itself out. Now if you've got a clay line pond, that's a different story. The clay keeps getting stirred up, and it's not really economical to keep dosing with flocculant every time it's stirred up. In those ponds, adding plants can make a big difference. The roots help trap sediments, and give those fine particles something to cling on to. Every bit of surface area helps. Stems, leaves, roots. They all build up that thin biofilm that acts like a glue for fine sediments. Even the organic matter that breaks down over time encourages more of that biofilm to form and that slowly helps the pond hold its clarity. In large unlined ponds, you can build up a decent layer of organic material without causing water quality problems. The deeper ponds can go for years, even generations, before they need to be dredged. Adding aeration or using bacteria products that help break down sludge can slow that build up even more and might mean you never have to dredge it at all. So in short, cloudy water is usually just a phase. In a new pond, it's usually the rock dust and clay that needs to settle. And in older ponds, plants and biology will take care of it over time. Once that natural system kicks in, it tends to stay clear with very little effort. Anyway, I hope you found this ramble helpful. Ponds go through phases, they tell you what's going on, if you know what to look for, and most of the time it's just nature doing its thing. A healthy pond isn't always a perfect pond, and sometimes the messy bits are doing more good than harm. If you want to dive a bit deeper into all this stuff, I've got plenty more resources and calculators over at ozponds.com, so feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching, see ya.